Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing book and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today we're going to be going over my 31 books for October. If you're new here, which hey, a lot of you are, hello, welcome. In October, I always do a 31 books in October where I try to read 31 books in 31 days. Do I ever get anywhere near? No, I do not. But it's fun to try. So today I'm going to be going over the book options that I have with you. I've picked 40 spooky books. Some are mid-grade, some are YA, some are adult. Uh, but 40 spooky books that are going to fill out my 31 books of October. I will be prioritizing my TBR books and I uh, have a bunch of spooky arcs that I need to get to because a lot of them came out in September and August and we're into October. So I have a lot of those I need to get to as well. So I'm prioritizing arcs and my physical TBR but I also have some books that I own audiobook copies of that I also would like to get to as well. These are in no order other than just the order that I wrote them down on the list in so that I don't forget any of them. Um, if you want to see my planner video where I set up my October planner that actually should be the video directly before this one. Let's go over the books first. The first half are my physical TBR books and then it's kind of a mix of books that I have uh, arcs of and ones I don't and we'll go over those. I'll tell you a little bit about what the books are about if I know. Some I don't, some I do. We'll go from there. The first two are the last two books of the Sarah Normal series. They're book 10, A Perfect Storm, and book 11, Yesterday and Today. And this series follows Sarah who can see ghosts and throughout the series we've watched her, uh, her powers grow, her become a more adept at seeing ghosts but also being able to read people's minds and a bunch of other things. Um, in book nine, which is the last book that I read, uh, it was my favorite of the series so far. So I'm hoping that 10 and 11 do a great job as well. We then have The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This book follows a girl who posts a negative review of an author's book and that author we think begins to stalk her perhaps. That's all I really know. I then have books two and three in the Witches of Thistle Grove series. I don't know which is two and which is three and does the book tell me? No, because why would they do that? Um, they are from bad to cursed and back in a spell. I think it's two and then three, but I could be wrong. Uh, the series is set in Thistle Grove where there are families of witches and the first book takes place uh, in a year where the families have like a competition where the best magician of that family goes up against the other family's magicians and then they decide which family is going to be in the lead for the next however many years or in charge. I don't know. Um, I read the first book last year in October so I then have Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone. This is the second book in a duology. The first book is Lake's Edge and this follows a brother and sister who I think the brother has like weird powers and the sister might also have some weird powers. They are taken in by an old lady who punishes them for the powers that they have and then um, when they become teenagers they are out at their town and the lord of the land uh, comes to their town and he decides to take the twins back to his own home and then weird things happen. I'm definitely going to need to read a uh, review or a synopsis of the first book before I read that one because I have vague memories of things that happened and uh because I think I read it two years ago maybe. I then have Edie in Between by Laura Simpson. I actually don't know a lot about what this book is about. I mostly picked it up because the front looks like a tarot card. I know I'm basic. It's fine. Uh, I know that it follows our main character Edie who comes from a family of witches and she has always kind of rejected her powers and I'm sure there's like some you know big hubaloo that she has to accept her powers and become like the best witch ever in order to um, defeat the great evil or something of that sort. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't read it. I can't tell you what it's about because I don't know. I then have The Escape Room by Megan Golden. This I think is Megan Golden's debut. I've read um, The Night Swim and Dark Corners and really enjoyed those so I wanted to pick this one up as well. And this follows a group of co-workers that are going to like a team building exercise where they are in an escape room and people start to die. The Whisper Man by Alex North. This one follows a I think there was like a serial killer in the past and he's been arrested and then in present day like things are starting to happen again where they think that maybe that serial killer had trained a apprentice 
and the main character's son is now hearing like the whispers of what precedes the child being taken and murdered I think we then have the bone witch by Ren Chapeco I know that this one follows our main character who is a necromancer and in her society a witch who has necromancy powers is highly frowned upon so I don't really know what goes on after that but I do know that much I have read and loved the Girl from the Well by Ren Chapeco, but I have also DNF'd some books by Ren Chapeco, so this one should be interesting. This one's kind of like a third time's a charm, like either I will read this one and love it and keep reading Ren Chapeco, or I'll read this one and hate it and probably won't pick up anymore. We then have None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. I have not read Lisa Jewell before. Um, this was part of the Book of the Month selections, so I went ahead and picked it up. I know it follows a podcaster who does podcasts of true crime, and something happens that then makes them kind of like the top of a true crime. Not really 100% sure on that but we're rolling with it. I then have just another missing person. This one is by Jillian McAllister. I read her previous work Wrong Place Wrong Time and absolutely loved it. Therefore I have no idea what this book is about because I picked it up from book of the month with zero clue and just went full force into it. The Haunting of Lee Harker by Darcy Coates. It's a Darcy Coates. If you're new here I have been working slowly um, and enjoyably through all of Darcy Coates novels. I especially prefer her haunted house stories um, to her more like sci-fi or um, where like the human is the bad guy stories but I have been having a great time reading through them so I'm excited to get to this one. I then have two books by M. Verano. They are Diary of a Haunting and Possession. They are in this bind up. Why are they in a bind up called Diaries of a Haunting when it's technically a trilogy? I don't know the answer to that question because they did a bind up of only the first two books. The third book's not in here. I don't know. I have no idea. But I know that they both involve some kind of like a possession haunting. That's what I got. Okay. This Wicked Fate by Caitlin Bayron. This is the sequel to This Poison Heart, which I read a couple of months ago and really enjoyed. It follows our main character, Briseis who has this power to control plants or they at least act very strangely around her. Um, she can make them grow. Um, they will like lean toward her like she is the sun that they need to survive. And in the first book she lives in New York City with her two moms. She knows that she was adopted as a child and a lawyer shows up at her door and says, hey, guess what? We know that your mother's been dead but now your aunt has died and she has left you this massive estate out in the country and you need to go and check it out and so that's what her and her family does and weird things start happening because they're in the country in the middle of all of these plant life and plant life reacts weird around Perseus. First book was really good, had to pick up the second, ready to read it. One of Us is Next by Karen and McManus. This is the follow-up to One of Us is Lying. That book's been around booktube forever. I'm sure you know what it's about. It's about I think five or six students where one student dies in the middle of a classroom and we have to figure out who did the killing. And the last five books that I have physical copies of are books from the Creepover series. I have been reading through this series for the last I don't know five or six years. Um, these are books 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22 because I already read book 20 and this is the last of the series that is published. So once I finish these five books plus the two Sarah Normal books I will be through my mid-grade series. So I'm gonna need a new mid-grade series. So if you know something like this um, that is like Sarah Normal is 11 books and they're all connected whereas the Creepover series is 22 books and they're not connected at all. They are all separate. So um, this one is about zombies because it's called It Spells Zombie. Don't Move a Muscle that's got something to do with a graveyard. The Terror Behind the Mask which is them in a basement so I'm assuming there's a mask in the basement. The Ride of Your Life which is at a carnival and Your Worst Nightmare which looks like it has a clown on the cover of some sort. So these are as I say I always look at like what the spooky meter on the back is because that typically tells me how much I'm going to enjoy the book. It has this creepo meter on the back and so of these five two of them are a four spooky and three of them are a five spooky so theoretically I should really like all five of these but we'll see. Then we're into um, books that are either ARCs or I own digital copies of. First of which is Thicker Than Water by Megan Collins which I own a audiobook copy of. I don't know what that book's about but I've read other books by Megan Collins that I've really enjoyed so it's on the list. The Book of Witches which is an anthology of short stories about witches and is an ARC. 
Survive the Night by Riley Sager. It is to this day the only Sager that I have not read. I know it's everybody's least favorite, so I keep putting it off, but I do need to read it eventually. The Witch is Back by Sophie H. Morgan, which is a witch book, but I think it's a romance. Don't know what it's about, also an arc. Vampires, Hearts, and Other Dead Things uh, by this person that you can see on the screen, uh, I think is a YA and I think is also a romance. The Night House by Joe Nesbo. Don't know what this one's about. It's an arc and it's an adult horror. My Roommate is a Vampire by Jenna Levine, which is an arc and is a romance. The Hexologist by Josiah Bancroft, which is an adult. Don't know what it's about. Probably does something to do with witches. It's also an arc. Hex Education by Maureen Kilmer is an arc. I know it involves three witches who were together in school and I believe there was like a fire or something bad happened and they are getting together uh, in the present day. They haven't really seen each other for a long time. I don't know what's going on in present day but I know there's something going on because obviously or there wouldn't be a book. Not Your Crush's Cauldron by April Asher. This is the one I'm least likely to read during the event mostly because it comes out on February 13th so it's like the farthest away. Um, it is an arc. It is the third book in the Supernatural single series, the first of which is Not the Witch You Wed. Each book follows a different sister. Um, the first book was the oldest sister, the second book was the middle sister, now we're getting the youngest sister, um, and her relationship with a guardian angel. Should be a fun time. Also, romance. The Hunting Moon by Susan Dennard is an arc. It is the sequel to The Luminaries, and it follows our good friend Winnie Wednesday, who is a luminary, which means that she hunts monsters, nightmares, evil things in the woods that kill people. The Witches of Bone Hill, which is an arc by Ava Morgan. I don't know what it's about. I've heard from Ava Morgan in the past and really liked it, so I got the arc and then promptly forgot what it was about. Extra Normal by Kate Alice Marshall. This is her mid-grade. It is the newest one. I think it either just recently came out or will be coming out in early October. I can't remember which because no one is as busy as Kate Alice Marshall. She had an adult, a mid-grade, and a YA come out in 2023. The power of this woman has no limits. I am so excited. I've already read the other two and now I get to read the mid-grade. Don't know what it's about. Don't need to know love all of her books. Witchful Thinking by Celeste Martin. It is an arc that came out last year in September and I still have not read it yet and I also own a copy of it on Audible and it's a romance and I need to read it. Our Last Echoes also by Kate Alice Marshall. It is the one backlist Kate Alice Marshall that I have not read yet so I need to get to that. I also own a copy of that an audiobook. Speaking of audiobooks I own uh, The Girls Are Never Gone. Sarah Glenn Marsh is that right? It's someone that I've read their books from before. I know it has something to do with a girl and there's a ghost and it's sapphic. Does she fall in love with a girl ghost? It's possible. I don't remember. Um, another one that I didn't write down who the author was, Together We Rot, but it's right here. You can see it. This one literally hit my list last minute because I heard Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany talking about it and absolutely have to know what it's about now. I mean I know what it's about but I have to read it. You know what I'm saying? Like someone else talked about it and I was like this book sounds fantastic. I must read. Uh, it follows a boy and a girl. It's a YA. It's a romance. Something about her mother perhaps has been missing for years and people were like well she's an adult. She can do what she wants and the boy his family is like a weird religious family and he thinks that one day he's going to be taking over for his father and what he is finding out is that not that he's going to take over for his father but that he was raised to be a sacrifice to their gods and he's on the run and she's convinced that his family is the reason that her mom is missing so they start to work together to try to prove that his family's evil. I don't know. Also there's something inside him it's got some body horror, which is not my favorite, but when done right, can be so good. I have to read it now. I have to, I have to read it. It's compulsory. And then the 40th and final book on this list is The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. 
that's probably not right but that's what my brain tells me it is this is Mars's favorite book of all time they actually did a video very recently of them annotating the whole book and I will link that in the description box down below for you they recommended it to me last year and I never got around to it in October so I've been saving it up for this October I hopefully will get to it again I know I'm not going to get to all these books some of them I have audiobooks for so I'm more likely to get to ones that I have audiobooks for than ones that I have to read physically just because that's how I read most of the time uh, I can read like these pretty easily and not have a hard time because the writing is fairly large. Um, most of my physical reading problems is because it tends to give me a migraine, but if it has large enough writing, I'm usually okay. Um, if it is like regular writing that you get in like a typical YA or adult book, it can take me a while, but I will get through it eventually. So those are the 40 books that I'm going to get through as many of as possible during the month of October. I don't know that there's going to be any other books that I have to read that month. I will also be reading the first book in the Vampire Academy series, but I think I'm going to do that in November, which that'll be for AuthorTube chat, which Kate and I will give you more information about on Monday. You will have seen that by now. It's on... Monday's AuthorTube chat book club. Um, I'll link that down below for you as well if you want to know more about Vampire Academy and you want to read with us and also watch the movie and also watch the TV series because we're going to be doing that. So more information about that down below as well. If you made it this far in the video or you just don't have anything you really want to comment but you want to leave a comment you can leave me a pumpkin emoji in the comment section down below and I will see you guys next time. Bye!